what I liked about the, the Swedish system was that the firefighters were now in control. And um, when we started training back in my own brigade in Australia, the first thing that many firefighters would say was, you know, even very experienced firefighters, was that for the first time in their career they felt that they were in control because they understood what was happening around them. It's made the job of firefighting far safer, uh, in my opinion, and I think in everybody's opinion in the UK. We are now proactive with fire rather than reacting to what fire does. Um, we know what's going to happen in a fire um, and we can control the fire and what we want the fire to do. We've been fighting fires for so long and yet we didn't really understand fire and so these guys have gone back to the basics and uh, there was a big gap there and they filled that gap and once you fill that gap in the basics that allows you the opportunity to, to improve every aspect of your operations right up to the strategic level. Since 1986 and onwards, all Swedish firefighters, from professionals to volunteers, chiefs as well as ordinary nozzlemen, have been undergoing regular practical training in fire behaviour. The training has been large scale in flashover containers and real buildings and involves fighting fire both from the outside and from the inside. If they don't have that level of knowledge, they can easily get very severely injured or killed in a sudden and unexpected rapid fire development, such as a flashover or backdraft or whatever you would like to call it. In this particular exercise from 1995, firefighters at the Swedish Sandu College of Fire and Rescue are testing a method that was originally developed in America called positive pressure ventilation. The method makes use of fans to direct and control the fire gases, then cuts the oxygen supply and quickly suffocate the fire. To be completely fair, the Swedes were not the first to discover fire gas cooling, nor were they the first to discover fog nozzles. Already during the Second World War, early forms of fire gas cooling techniques were applied within the US Coast Guard and later applied in domestic firefighting. Intense heat may force you to use either the indirect or the combination attack. With the indirect attack, you spray only the heated overhead. The combination attack, a combination of the direct and indirect methods, is accomplished by rapidly rotating the nozzle in a clockwise direction. However, Few of these techniques ever became widespread within the US and today they are for the most part forgotten. The Swedes were the first to research and apply these ideas around the ignitability of smoke in a way that it became useful to ordinary firefighters. We've done other pioneering development too in other areas, in Hazmat for instance, but this is the part that I'm particularly proud of. And I know that it's needed still today at least to understand the fire behavior regardless of the tool or nozzle you use you have to have a, a sound understanding of fire behavior to be able to work safely my eyes were opened i learned a, a, a great deal that uh, that i hadn't uh, hadn't known previously and uh, even even with a, a fairly long uh, time in the fire service. Uh, so when I went back to the United States, uh, uh, I was working for uh, Gresham Fire and Emergency Services at the time, and uh, we began the process of designing uh, a fire behavior curriculum based on the Swedish model. 